Good morning. Welcome to our weekly live encouragement. Thank you so much for joining today. Um, as always, it's a topic that I'm excited about, um, ready to share the word with you. Ooh, and now I have hot coffee, fresh, yum, awesome. Um, today, we are going to talk about a misconception about victory. And um, it's a misconception that I've discovered and that I've seen in my own life. And I've had so many people come to me uh, about the same misconception of victory. So um, a misconception about victory is once you have a victory, you've won and the devil's gone. <laughs> Surprise! Um, but it really, seriously, like we really believe, especially I've had people come to me with super big victories, like big things that they won and they are confused about, now I'm struggling with this little thing that's in front of me. Mm -hmm. And it's um, a misconception that is really dangerous and can trap us. And one of the things as I was um, praying about this, because I know that the... Word of God says that everything has to work out for our good. And so I asked the Lord, I talked to him about it. Why is it then that the devil even comes at us if he knows it's only going to work out for our good? And if he knows every weapon formed, it can't prosper against us. If he knows that, why does he even try? And the Spirit of God led me to the passage of Jesus' temptation in Luke chapter 4, and verse 13, I believe it's 13. Luke 4, 13, yes. So Jesus had been tempted in the wilderness, and it says that the devil, now the devil had ended every temptation, and he departed from him. But you know what? It doesn't end there. That's not where the scripture ends. And so many times we stop right there. You know, it says resist the devil and he will flee, but he's still the devil. He's still our enemy, our adversary, just waiting to pounce on us. Listen to what it says right after that. It said, he departed from him until a more opportune time. Mm -hmm. And let me read it to you from the amplified um, version. I like this one too. It says, and when the devil had ended every temptation, he temporarily left him. This is stood off from him just far enough until another more opportune and favorable time. So really what happened is he stood just like he has to flee the word of God. So he stood right on that line. You know, the line that you draw, he stood right on that line with his toes touching the line, just waiting for another opportune time. And that's what the Lord spoke to me about victory. And when we win a victory, the devil goes off just far enough to, for another opportune time. And he says, maybe this time, maybe this time I can get them if it's a more opportune time. So we've got to guard ourselves. Let me read this scripture to you. There's a couple of verses I want to read. First Corinthians 10, 13 says, and, and you need to get this into your spirit. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So just know that and remember that in your battle and victory. Mm -hmm. And then... We must be alert. So the scripture in 1 Peter 5, 8, and 9, it tells us to stay alert. And the reason he tells us to stay alert, it goes on to say, but it's this picture of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness when the devil, when he was over, the devil finally went and put his toes right on that line as close as he could get, but far away that he had to flee, waiting for an opportune time. So it says, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of sufferings that you are. So we must pay attention. When we win a victory, that's awesome. But yesterday's victory is not the conclusion of today. 
days unless you apply the same principles. And the devil's hoping that like Jesus in the wilderness, and I love that he gives this example of temptation, showing that even at your weakest, even when you're all alone, even when you're famished in a desert place, that you can have victory over the temptations of the devil, over the things that the enemy brings at us. So we need to remember in our last victory for our next victory that we have to apply the same faith, but the enemy is hoping that maybe this time he's going to find you too hungry, too famished, too broken, too offended, too tired, too much fear coming upon you. He's hoping that maybe this time he's got you isolated out there in the wilderness all by yourself. Maybe this time I'll get them because maybe this time just waiting for a more opportune time. So just because you've won great victories doesn't mean you can put this word down. It doesn't mean that you can put this faith shield down. Listen, the same faith shield that won that last victory is the same shield that you have for this victory that you're facing, no matter what it is, no matter how tired you are, no matter how discouraged, no matter how alone, no matter how many lies the enemy has whispered in your ear. If you hold up the same shield of faith that is still available to you in this next battle, you'll still win a victory. But he's hoping that you're going to think, oh, I just can't. I just, it's been too much. There's just too much that's gone on. I'm just too tired. This has just gone on too long. Uh, everybody's abandoned me and left me. I'm not strong enough. Listen, you made it through that last victory. The yeah. same authority is yours today. And the enemy is just waiting for you to be too tired. He's just waiting for a more opportune time. It's in those moments that we have to remember what we already know to be true. You have to remind yourself you still have that shield of faith that will quench every fiery dart. Your shield of faith will quench today's fiery dart. It quenched yesterday's fiery dart, and it's going to quench today's fiery dart. But we get too comfortable in great victories. We're like, wow, I'm so super strong. So maybe we start neglecting putting in the word of God. Maybe we're like, woohoo, I got this. And we aren't spending the same amount of time that we were while we were in the heat of the battle. Man, the devil is just waiting for you to do that. Maybe life got busy. Maybe things shifted and changed. The devil is just waiting for that more opportune time to come in. And listen, you don't have to be afraid that the devil is standing there waiting for the next opportune time at all. Listen, Jesus, this he came back in again with Judas betraying him. Jesus was betrayed by one of his closest. The enemy tried again. He was waiting for that more opportune time. And then after this betrayal, oh, surely this is going to be a real opportune time. I'll get you in the garden of Gethsemane and just overwhelm you with the thought of the suffering that you're going to go through. Maybe that time I'll be able to get you to crumble and be weak enough, Jesus. But Jesus withstood every single level of of temptation, even to the place of going to the cross and dying for us. The devil, if he waited just far enough off till he could have a more opportune time with Jesus, just think, the enemy of our soul has his henchmen, demons, just standing far enough off waiting, especially if it's one that he's got you with in the past. He's going to just stand just so you resist. He has to flee. If you resist, even in this moment, he has to flee again. Keep pushing him back to that line. He's not going to leave that line. He's going to stay there. And that's the misconception of victory. We think because we've gotten that victory that he's gone, that the devil's just gone. No, he's not. He's standing on that line where he has to go, and he's just waiting, waiting like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. We've got to keep ourselves from being in a position. It says stay alert, be aware. We have got to get the word of God in us so strong and so mighty that it doesn't matter if we've been in the wilderness, we haven't eaten in 40 days, we feel abandoned, isolated, alone, broken, and really destitute. 
It doesn't matter if we put this word in us and we resist, the devil has to flee every single time. Don't let this be your maybe this time. Maybe this time I can just overwhelm them and discourage. Isn't it incredible? It's crazy to me how you can win such amazing victories and then be faced with something and have any kind of doubt and fear. But how many of you are human? And that happens, and that's a reality, and that's the misconception that I want to warn you about today is thinking that just because you had that great victory that the devil's just gone and, and we're actually shocked when he comes in and attacks with different things that happen. I mean, listen, he is coordinating things to happen to try to get you discouraged, to try to take you out, to try to create a scenario for a more opportune time. We cannot be ignorant of the devil's devices. He is waiting in the, in the lurches for a more opportune time. And we have got to be aware of that. And we've got to be ready. And we've got to be reminded that the same power that raised Christ from the dead, that brought us to our victory last time, is the very same power that is in you right now. Right now. If you're in one of those more opportune times where things have happened, things have shifted and changed, maybe there was a, a termination of a job or a, a shifting in a uh, location. Maybe it was uh, a struggle. Maybe it was some kind of strife. Maybe it was some kind of betrayal. Maybe it was some kind of offense. Maybe you're in a more opportune time. I want you to hear me. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead still dwells inside of you and will quicken your mortal body. Mm -hmm. It is still John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The devil would love for you to believe his lies. His, his promises are full of deception. We have got to not pay attention to his lies. He'll tell you, it's just easier to give up. It's just easier to throw in the towel. It's just easier. Oh, listen, it is not easier. He wants you to believe that lie in this more opportune time for him. But we've got to be reminded that we still have a shield of faith that will quench every fiery dart. We still have the sword of the spirit that will cut through everything that he brings at us. We still have the authority of Luke 10, 19, that we've been authorized against every device of the enemy, no matter what way it comes in. We have got to remain aware and alert, even in our great victories. Yes, celebrate your victory, but even, even after your victory, keep feeding your spirit man the word of God. Stay strong in your spirit. Stay strong in your faith. Don't allow for a moment. Don't give the devil a foothold. If we give him a foothold, he doesn't just take an inch. He takes a mile. And we have got to be vigilant. Stay alert, according to 1 Peter. We have got to pay attention because he's just hoping he is just hoping he is never going to stop trying. And that's what you need to know about victory. Just because you've won a great victory does not mean the devil's going to go away. It nowhere in the word. It tells us to be aware of his devices, to stay alert, to be vigilant. We must pay attention to the lies, to his fear that he tries to bring, doubt and discouragement that he tries to bring in. We have got to remain aware that for this next victory, it's going to take today's faith, today's fighting, holding up today's word in our lives, yesterday's victory. And you know, a lot of times we try to go back to that. Well, man, I shouldn't be dealing with this because look what I've already conquered. Look what I've already defeated. I shouldn't be dealing with that. Listen, the devil is going to continue to try, but he is powerless. Mm -hmm. He is powerless unless you give up. Do not give up and do not give in no matter what. Do not let this be a more opportune time and be aware and know he's just waiting for you to isolate. He's waiting for you to get too busy. He's waiting for you to receive that lie that says, oh, you should just take a break. You should just separate yourself. Oh, he wants you to believe that. That's his 
promise that's laced with deception. He promises you that, oh, you just need to take a break. Oh, that is full of deception. What he's trying to do is get you alone and get you isolated yeah. so that he can attack you. But just as Jesus was all alone in the wilderness, he was at the weakest human place that you could be in. And listen, he was all human in that moment. He was literally just like you would feel if you were all alone in the wilderness, if you hadn't eaten in 40 days, if you have been walking and wandering around in a wilderness place, a dry and weary, no encouragement, no people to cheer you on. That's where he wants to get you. He wants to get you isolated. But Jesus showed us this example so he could encourage us that you're never in a place that is more opportune as long as you remember who you are, as long as you remember your shield, your sword, your authority, your power, your dominion. He gives us surpassing victory, overwhelming victory, even at your worst and weakest moments. Do not let the lie of the enemy tell you that you are too weak that this is too much, that you just can't go on, that this is, man, it's just been one thing after another. You should just quit. You should just give up. That's what he says to us. He's waiting. He is just waiting for us to bite on that, just to take it for just a moment. And man, once you take that, just receiving it even a little bit, he's just going to flood you with every negative emotion and thought in your mind. And you're going to be on a freight train that he will try to destroy you with. But you are never, ever, ever in a place that you are too, even if your body is completely famished, if you are completely isolated, if you've been betrayed, he wasn't just betrayed betrayed by Judas. He was also betrayed by Peter, one of his closest disciples, somebody that he loved desperately. Maybe you're in that position. What Jesus, his victories showed us that even in those moments, you can stand a victor. You can rise above. Do not allow this to be the enemies. Maybe this time, maybe this time they'll just be too broken. Maybe this time the hit will just be too strong. Maybe it's in your finances. Maybe something has happened. Maybe the devourer has tried to come. Listen, if, as long as you're a tither and you're obedient to the word of God in your finances, the word of God says he will rebuke the devourer. I've seen where he's where the devourer has come in and tried to decimate and it could really overwhelm you in a natural sense. But when you know the word of God, I've watched God show up supernatural. Listen, one of his prophets, he sent a raven to feed him. He will do whatever he has to do to bring you out to victory if we don't quit, if we don't give up in those more opportune times. So I want you to remain alert. Stay aware that the devil isn't gone just because he fleed. He does it. When we resist, he has to flee, but he goes just as far as he has to go and no further. He waits, just waiting there to pounce, waits to, for a no more opportune time. Do not allow him to win in your life in those moments where you feel weak. Do not allow him to win. Do not give up on your faith. Do not quit. Apply the exact same faith that you did in every other battle, and that same faith will bring you through this battle, the next battle, and every other battle. You can walk in victory every day, but it's not based on yesterday's victory. You walk in victory every day because you choose faith instead of fear, faith instead of doubt. You choose to hold your shield up. You choose to resist. We have to resist. Uh, it doesn't take a lot. All we have to do is resist. Use the word of God. Find the word. That's what I love to do. When I ever, whenever I'm facing anything, I will do a word search in the Bible. I will do a Google word search and say scripture after it. So if it's financial, I just put finance scriptures and I read everything from the word of God, filling myself up, filling my armor, putting my sword out and my shield up. When we do that, we will overcome. Do not allow the enemy to take over in your thought life in those weak moments. Just fill up, fuel up, 
The word, the word, the word, the word is what will get you through every opportune moment that the enemy thinks he has. I can't stand him beating out Christians with this waiting, just waiting for us to get weak, waiting for an offense to happen, waiting for a shift or change in the environment or the atmosphere or the economy or the government, waiting for something to discourage us, waiting for a betrayal. Wait, he's just waiting for those moments to happen, to pounce, because that's what he does. He plays dirty. He waits till you're weak, and then he tries to get in. That's how he ravages God's people, and I'm so tired of watching people that have had amazing victories be taken out in the next breath because the devil waits. He just waits. We have got to be alert. So today I'm sounding the alarm on this misconception of victory. Just because I have a victory, I can just sit back and relax and I don't have to worry about the devil anymore. I've resisted him. He's all gone. No, he's not. He's just waiting. He's just waiting for a more opportune time. And that's not scary. That means we have to pay attention and be alert. That's all. We have to be alert. We have to be vigilant, it says. That means constantly and continually paying attention. And it's super easy. If we continually get in the word every single day, when we resist, we resist with the word of God. So if we are full of the word of God, it's an automatic resisting. It's not even like a struggle. It's not even like, oh, well, the devil's come in today. I'm, I'm really fighting hard. No, when you're full of the word of God, it's almost an automatic resisting. Like Jesus, when he was tempted, automatically out of his mouth came the word of God. And when we are filled with this, if our body is completely weak, if we are in a desert place and we are all alone, if we are filled with this what will come out of us when the devil comes in to tempt automatically the word of god is going to come out of you automatically it's not going to be hard it's not going to be something that you have to oh man i've been fighting this good fight of it no it's going to just come out of you and that is the exciting part about being alert and being vigilant is it will automatically start coming out of you in response to when the devil comes in, maybe this time, oh man, you are so dumb, devil. You are so dumb. This time and every time it works out for my good. This time and every time. I want you to tell him that. When he comes in like a flood with his lies in your head, I want you to just tell him out loud, no, this time and every time it works out for my good. And you know what? That means better, not the same. It doesn't work out for your same. It works out for your good. So I'm just going to get better and better, devil. And when he comes in, you just tell him, this time and every time, no weapon formed against me can prosper. This time and every time, if I resist you, you have to flee. Get out in the name of Jesus. We have authority no matter what. But we've got to be vigilant. We've got, do not get comfortable. Never get comfortable. Your enemy is lurking. He is waiting as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And that's serious business. It's not something we can play around with. We have got to be solid in the word, the word, the word, the word. And then it will just come easy and it will come natural. You will fight the devil just as Jesus fought him in his human weakest moments of life. He fought the enemy simply with the spoken, the spoken. He spoke out loud the word of the Lord and he caused the devil to have to flee back over that line. I want to keep the devil over that line at all times. Oh man, I get so ticked off when I see him cross over. Well, you don't even have any right. You're trespassing. Who do you think you are? Get back over that line. You might be able to stand there and watch and, and wait for a moment, but you don't you dare cross that line. I am never going to allow my guard down enough for you to cross that line. Get back, move over that line and stay out. We have got to be that alert about the enemy and our victories. I have talked to so many people that have had really great victories and they come to me. I don't understand why I'm still having this battle. As long as you are in this life, the enemy is going to try to come in and tempt you. He's going to try to take you out. You have a choice though, every new day, 
how you're going to battle that. You can battle that with peace in your spirit by simply just getting so much of this in you that it's what automatically comes out of you. It's yeah. not even like it's an effort battle. It's not even like it's a struggle battle. Just keep putting this in. And if you have to put it out a whole lot, make sure you're putting it in a whole lot more. That's the only thing we have to do is remain filled with Jesus. Remind our spirit, remind our soul, remind our thoughts what the word of God has to say. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. This time, next time, and every time. It's the same. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I don't know what position you're at. If you're at a complete place of discouragement or the devil's just gotten his lies right in there, Jesus is the same yesterday Yesterday, today and forever he's still greater he still has overcome that for you he still has surpassing victory he has planned a way out we read in first corinthians he has planned a way out for you you will be victorious do not give in do not give up simply pick up the word of god and fill yourself that this would come out of you. This is the only, oh, I just, uh, this is the only thing I want to come out of me when the enemy comes in and tries to take me out. I don't want there to be an ounce of fear and doubt. And when you put this in and you're full of this, there's no room for fear and doubt. There's actually no room for falling and failure. There's no room when you have the word of God in you. So be vigilant today. Stay alert and don't rest on yesterday's victory. Don't rest on that. Rest on knowing that the word of God in you is powerful. It is as powerful today as it was for yesterday's victory. And it'll be as powerful tomorrow as it was for today's victory. It will never, ever lose its power. So stay alert and use the example of Jesus in Luke 4, and it's also in Matthew 4. And one of the beautiful things too, and whenever you see a great temptation from the devil come, you see ministering angels come. We see that in Matthew chapter 4 in this, that ministering angels came to Jesus after his victory. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, the same thing, it said ministering angels came to him. God will strengthen you. God will strengthen you. You win this victory. You're going to feel the strength of the Lord. I love you so much. I pray that this has been helpful for you today, and I look forward to seeing you back on here next week.